Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2020 video. Today you'll see a slightly different camera angle. Uh, it's not going to stay like this. This is just because I want to be able to show you that I am using the um, combined traction brake controller. Uh, which will be available through Alan Thompson Sim from TS Controllers very, very soon. Um, it's not close up. I will have controller cam and we'll cover both these uh, boxes. I'm also using the um, new door control box with the DRA switch and everything all on there. So um, we will get to a video of showing those off when the, the software is finalized. Um, but I just want to basically give you an idea of how it looks driving with it at the moment. Um, this run today is by a guy that's been quite new to uh, releasing scenarios over on alanthompsonsim.com. His name is Ben Tom, and this is one something or other. We'll, we'll find out what the head code is in a minute. Uh, welcome aboard this infrequent LNER service departing from Glasgow Central. This train would usually go to King's Cross, but it's being cut short due to a fault. Get the train ready, and we depart in a few minutes. Okay, I don't know if we'll find out what the fault is. We shall find out. Uh, using the um, ATS uh, in developments, this is still heavily work in progress, um, a Zuma upgrade, a class 800 upgrade. Uh, if I press left and then left again, we should have a slightly broader cab view. Let's go with that one. Um, so let's get, uh, do we have master key? This doesn't have a master key, does it? So we'll just go through there. I'm also using the AWS button as well, so this will be as driving with as little on the keyboard as possible uh, at the moment. So we need our instrument lights uh, on, they're over here. We've got our headlights done. So let's do door release. So to show you with door release, what I'm going to do is on my right hand side doors, two buttons, and that will release my doors. These do light up with the uh, units that support door, um, like door open and close function. Uh, so with the stuff that just standard works on just the T button, it's not quite the same yet, but the software's being tweaked, so don't worry. Uh, this is a subwear scenario. So those of you who have a subscription to AlanThompsonSim.com uh, will be able to get this scenario. I think it's available now um, or very, very soon. I think it's got to change a 380 actually, I think. So it might not be available just yet. But keep your eye on the website, it should be there anytime soon. Right, let's get my brake up there. Let's have a look at where we're going. That's this one takes sending our services to Glasgow Central, from Glasgow Central to Edinburgh via Carstairs. We'll call it Motherwell, Haymarket, and Edinburgh. So, about an hour and a, an hour's run, really, hour and a few minutes, maybe which is a quite nice run for the Azuma. So at the moment, the sound pack, uh, there's not many changes to the sounds that you will notice from the last video. Uh, most of the work that's been done at the moment has been done on the texturing and the external livery. So we're talking about window frames and things. These have all been done with different child objects. Uh, destinations are on the way, I think. Uh, other things that have been done are the all the seat numbers and door numbers are all correct. Um, can't else remember what else there is on this. Quite a lot that Klaus has done. I'm rubbish when it comes to the textury stuff, so there'll be a full change log when that's all available. Uh, fingers crossed this shouldn't be too far uh, away. It has been worked on in the background for quite a while. Uh, the problem is there's been other things that have taken priority at the minute. So uh, we're just sort of having to get stuff done when we can more than anything. Let's have a screeny, shall we? Quite like to have got it with a Glasgow Central big front in it, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. That's relatively nice. Right, we've got interlock. Um, guards buzzer doesn't work on this either, so don't worry. It does on the on anything that has a guards buzzer properly. You press the guards buzzer, buzzer button and it works. Uh, this isn't the best train to show it off with. At the moment, a lot of the work I'm doing with the hardware is testing it with all the different variations of trains we have within Train Simulator, which is a big, 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 big task. Uh, the software is pretty clever in itself. It's handling a lot of the, the finer details, uh, so it's working quite well so far. I'm very, very pleased.
So we're hoping soon enough uh, that what you'll be able to do with this will be um, power changeover and also uh, have the speed set which they use. What we won't be able to change is the ATP speedo. Um, that's too much of a modification to the cab at the moment. That would require a, a, a most of a new cab, really. So we're sort of stuck with that, which isn't exactly pro prototypical for the um, LNER free fleet, but uh, it'll do. It's a long old 156 consistor. now so this has also had the physics changed <coughs> uh, the physics have been heavily edited uh, within the um, LNR 800s 8300s Azumas um, so you don't get it take off like a rocket ship anymore um, holds 125 quite nicely a notch 4 um, it's a, a much more pleasant experience to drive put it that way also, you've got the um, much up near to zero in it, uh, much updated cab view, um, passenger view. This is still again work in progress, but Klaus has worked really hard on getting the maquettes right and everything. So I'm really, really pleased to see that. That's because of my field of view. Don't worry about that bit. And the cabins, the passenger view at the moment is actually loud, so we can assess the motor sounds. So it's it's not going to stay as loud as it is, but it gives you an idea of them. This route is a West Coast mainline north, but it's the one that's merged over on alanthompsonsim.com. So this is merged with um, the DPS Edinburgh extension and also West Coast mainline over Shap. So it's a fair drive if you drive it all the way down. It's a good drive. I like it. It's about as much of the West Coast mainline, the longest, I think it's about the longest section we can drive at the moment anyway, isn't it? So I'm having to adjust where the mic and everything is because I've changed where the camera and stuff is. Uh, at the moment, I'm using uh, the T-bar for the controllers, so uh, the bars are adjustable. So you can, well, adjustable, varied, so you could have like the ElectroStar handle, or you could have sort of like a 390 uh, HST 91E wall type, and they can all be adjusted on top of the controller. Again, full controller video will be coming, don't worry. So for this, I'm using the T-bar, which is sort of more suited to sort of the Dezeros, sort of 350s, 444s, 450s, that sort of thing. But it works nicely for the 395 in this. famous skip fire of the West Coast Mainline North. Cali sleeper in there, look. Can't wait to get some proper Mark 5s for them. It's a nice flashing at yellow there for us by the looks of it. Diverging onto a 40. It's 
is rude. That's quite strangely. Usually would be up here over on the fast there. So I quite like getting to use the the slower lines. Still flashing, so we know we're getting a crossover. So yeah, it's been busy. Hardware side has been very, very busy. Um, software side, there's been a ton of subware stuff uploaded the last few weeks. It's been lovely to see. Uh, still working very, very, very hard on Cambridge Peterborough. Uh, we should hopefully have that in beta end of this week. That's my plan. And then hopefully release not long after that. Just hope there's no massive issues. <laughs> Which you will never say never on that front. We'll never say never on that front. Didn't set my DRA. Should have done that to show you, really. Also, Missing Link, that's uh, being worked on ridiculously quickly by Pete. There's a little extra bit in that for you that you guys don't know about yet, which I'm quite excited to show off. Uh, when we'll get that, I don't know yet. Um, I don't think it'll be too long away. He's working very very hard with it. The backlog at the moment has been um, between me, Pete, and the rest of the lads is the effect that uh, the recent global pandemic has had on us all. Um, so some of us have been at work a awful lot more while a lot of you guys unfortunately might have either been laid off or uh, furloughed or whatever or well, fortunately for some um, both me and Pete work in the public sector so it was <laughs> doubly busy um, so it's been really really busy thankfully um, towards the end of this uh, I've actually been able to uh, leave my job which has been a, a, a pleasurable 16 years experience but I'm uh, glad to be moving on and uh, I will now be working from home full time so it gives me a lot more time uh, to work on sort of train sim stuff which I am so excited about this week's been sort of this is what Tuesday so yesterday was sort of sorting everything out a bit of housekeeping getting everything in order to start working on things a lot more and it's a relief at the moment. It'll be tough, it'll be hard financially, but it'll be uh, well worth it in the end, I reckon. And for you guys, definitely, because it means a lot more can get done a lot quicker. Oh, neutral section functionality as well. Um, it's not covered by this route, but I'm pretty sure it's in the Azuma pack already. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. So there's been sort of, the reason for our uh, pack was just as a stand-in until uh, the Major Wales Designs um, brand new model was ready or Armstrong Powerhouse did their pack, did whatever they wanted to do with the sounds they have. Um, there's been a little bit of, I think, a hold up with the Major Wales 800, I think it's still been worked on, uh, some flaff about that a little while ago. But as far as I'm aware, it's still well in production, so I really still do hope to see that soon enough. Uh, so this will be a, a, a decent standard. I'm actually really impressed with what the guys have done. This is sort of a learning curve for them. It's not They're not sound, not been sound engineers, they're not scripters, anything like that. Klaus has done a lot of the uh, cab texturing and things like that, uh, which he's, he's done before. Uh, but Max has worked really hard with the sounds and still is continuously working on them. But it's a bit of a test bed for us more than anything, really. And it's something that I know a lot of you guys want to see as well, so... Looking forward to getting it out there. We've got Motherwell five miles. I don't think we get 125 till Law Junction, do we, after that? Is it Law Junction? 
I've also come to realise, uh, being involved with getting like a couple of the routes sorted and out, is how terrible my railway geography is. Awful. I'm pretty good geographically with the UK normally. Roads I'm not too bad with. See when it comes down to railways. Jesus. People are like, oh, this is such and such a junction. I go, uh-huh. Oh, what's the issue you had when it came off such and such a line? Yeah. No. No idea. Could not tell you. So I am working on it. I've invested some money in quite a lot of uh, cab ride DVDs. And there's a lot of really good free ones on YouTube as well. What a great resource that is um, for cab ride stuff. So definitely have a search for those. Some really good ones on there. Um, you guys like Don Coffey, Ben Elias, all of that do some stunning, stunning videos. Really informative bit of history as well as a bit of sort of technical stuff as well as the up-to-date modern history of the route I'm, my, my jaw's on the floor I mean I've been watching them for, for a, a long while now um, both of them but just fantastic just fantastic it's not only great for route building it's great to relax with it's also great if you just want to improve your knowledge a little bit I, I'm very, very impressed with them. So head over and have a look at those guys, seriously. Really, really cool. Let's actually stick to 90, Alan, come on. Let's keep it two. So as you can see, I've still got my Hotas X still sitting there. That's because that's, that's bolted to my desk, that one. Uh, that will come off with a new desk. I'm um, switching over sheds, uh, hopefully the next couple of weeks. Oh, sh sugar. Let's slow down. Um, so, I'm not doing anything drastic with a controller setup and everything just yet. You will see, uh, when I've moved into the new shed, there will be ample camera coverage of all the hardware that I'm using and everything like that. Um, and by that time, hopefully, they'll be available for purchase as well. Um, we don't know a rough price, um, so even if you ask in the YouTube comments, I cannot tell you a rough price at the minute. Uh, Dan from TS Controllers is working really hard to get it to an affordable level for everybody, but they are incredibly niche products. Um, these are cottage industry specialist built uh, bits of hardware. And also trying to use the most realistic feeling parts we can. I mean, um, for the AWS button, we went through about nine, I think, something ridiculous, different types of button uh, to try and get the right feel. Uh, with the door control panels, uh, so there's two versions of the door control panel. There's this one, which I'll use as a, a base for you. This one was, you're over there. Uh, this is the base model, so this doesn't come with a DRA on it. Um, and the buttons that are on this are slightly different than the ones I have on the DRA box, but the ones that are on DRA box are the final ones. So even with those buttons, um, there was a lot of work. It would have been very easy for us to jump onto Alibaba or Wish or AliExpress or one of those sorts of things, Banggood, um, order a load of massively cheap buttons that just look right and go for it. That's not what we wanted to do. That is not what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure that you were getting as a realistic feel as possible when uh, you were using the hardware. So you can see, I'm still getting it into my head to make sure I'm DRA neutral, then doors. I just did doors, neutral DRA there. But it's teaching, it's, it's it's affecting how I drive, and that's what I really like about it. It's bringing more of a more sense of realism to me as well, and it's another bit, of, another something I've got to think about, another procedure I've got to think about, and it's livened up bits of trains I haven't driven in ages. Uh, I really enjoy it. Really enjoy it. Right, Motherwell. So I don't know if any of you guys saw as well. Keith M. Ross, the guy who m created this route originally popped up on YouTube with some uh, new videos of his this route 
a couple of months back and it looked stunning. He'd done a really good job with that. I don't know if it's going to be releasable. Um, he, he was he said there were some complications around that so um, I hope one day it is available. I would love to see that released. And then I'd love to merge it all together and stick it on top of Missing Link and stick it on top of the stretch to Birmingham and then our, our new version of Trent Valley and then onto West Coast Mainline South. And then we'd have the whole merge of the West Coast Mainline. Yee! Q people going, I don't know why people like to do these merged routes. I don't like them. You don't have to have them. But if you do want them, we hope to have them. Right, interlock. Cool beans, we've got that. No guards buzzer, which is really irritating. So back into forward, DRA off. Power on. And trust me, even with our in, in ATS, even with the guys we work with within ATS, there are ones that do not like merge routes. Um, but there's other, the, the rest of us that really do. I really like them for the the fact that you feel like you're doing a complete journey. Don't get me wrong. I love also 20-minute scenarios when I haven't got long and I just want to drive something or um, I just need to show off, say, a bit of stock or something and I only need sort of 20, 30-minute scenario. Absolutely fine with that. What I want to be able to offer is choice. So you can choose whether you like it or not or have it or not. And I don't expect people to... Like, do a run from King's Cross to Hitchin on the merge. That's pointless, but you get the point. Right, what I am going to try and turn on, I'm not sure. I haven't tried it with the um, Azuma yet. And I think this is, is this Enter for its DSD? We might have changed it. One of the features um, of the software at the minute is that I can change the guards buzzer so I'm just going to show you on this box it's easy because it's not this one's not plugged in um, on the guards buzzer which is this green bad boy here this oh, when it's plugged in they light up by the way um, I can actually set this to do a different job um, so it's a programmable button because there's been a bit of a request for DSD pedals, and don't get me wrong, it's still something we're looking in for, into, but actually what we're going to try and do is give an option to be able to use the DSD button, uh, the guards button, as the DSD button. So you can switch between it. When you get to a station, you can have it as guards belt, and then when you're on the move, you can have it as DSD. It's not perfect. It's not for everybody. Um, we're going to try it now. It's my first time of trying it. Let's try it. So let's put the DSD back on this. Looks like we're working. We have DSD as well now. Okay. So we'll see how we do with that. I'm rubbish with the DR anyway, but having a, having another button to press. Don't see the guards buzzer button really is drastically different than pressing the E key, but it's just on one bit of kit and it's next to you. So I can see the appeal. Lots of people have also asked about light switches and um, wiper switches. Problem with that is there are so many different variations within TrainSim of how different developers and different bits of stock, even within the same developers, use the light configuration tool that it's very, very tricky. So it is something we're looking at and something we're working with, but don't hold your breath on that one. Everything in theory is... Um, doable it's just how much effort has to go into doing it so how much R&D has to go into doing it how much programming has to go into doing it and therefore that cost has to be passed on so you could end up with a, a, a light switch that costs more than a PBC controller <laughs> if we've got to go through and program every train individually so it's tricky there are ways around it and we're looking at those um, but I, I'm, there's not much more I can do with that at the minute um, 
Dan from TS Controllers is working on it pretty hard to, to get everything ready for release. There has been a big delay with the AWS boxes. The buttons that we source for them, um, there's a component within this that has been an absolute nightmare. Um, so they have been delayed. We are now coming up to maybe three weeks delay on those. So I apologize to everybody who is still waiting for their uh, AWS box. They are on their way as soon as the parts, as soon as the parts have arrived, it's not something that's gonna take then another week to get out to you. As soon as the parts are here, it can literally ship out within 24 hours. So um, fingers crossed, we've got some more news for that towards the end of this week. Uh, we have switched suppliers, as you might have, might have imagined. Unfortunately, to a more expensive supply. <laughs> but we, we've covered the cost for it, so it's no problem. All right, let's try and get some, see if we can keep some speed and get some DRA action working now. Just hoping the, DR, DR, the DSD sound has been sorted in this. It might be sound and I don't hear it because I've got a beta version of the uh, 800 in. With the Azuma. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. not touch the controls for a bit, fingers crossed we'll get that DSD going off. There's also going to be people that are going to be concerned about how the, the, the Azuma's moving at the minute. Just to give you guys a reminder that this route is... 11 years old I think um, so it has no super elevation in the track and what we mean by super elevation is when we come to a corner the track isn't what they call canted so it's not at an angle so the track's flat what that means is the physics that are put on the train and train sim is that it makes it shake a bit it's also why if you try and do anything with the the 390 on the west coast mainline north it's awful and if you even try dared to do a, a, there we go dared to do a career scenario um, with the 390, it was um, <laughs> not worth doing. So you've got the new DSD sound there as well, I'm glad it's in. We shall probably hear that once or twice more on this journey, I think. And yeah, I'm cancelling that by uh, the guard's buzzer, oh, what's up there? Guard's buzzer there. And then when I stop, I can change it back for guards buzzer. Although I don't think this train has one. It will do when we have the pack finished. Because the ones on the 800s are obnoxiously loud. Uh, the, I keep calling them 800s or ITs. What I'm referring to is the Hitachi AT300 series. In general. Oh, invoices, that's always helpful. too far too we're going to be slowing down for Haymarket now either I mean for such an old route I still love this route still really really love this route 
and especially with the merge version. Oh. It's the sort of route I really happily play by myself. Do you guys have those? You have well, so you say that like you all do YouTube. <laughs> um, there are there, there are sort of go to. So do you sort of have like a go to route um, that you sort of find yourself always sort of coming back to? Let me know. And also, I need to work out how to put a poll on. You can put polls on YouTube videos now. I'm, I'm going to work out how to do that. So when I ask you these questions, I can get some actual feedback, like proper, like, data from it. Oh. And we've got a red. So yeah, I do remember guys, sounds are not final on this. Um, it's missing the very last little squeal sound. There's a few other bits and pieces. Um, this is heavily worth breaks. We do have a two-tone horn in this for once, but it's uh, very, very quiet uh, at the moment. And he says he has a two-tone horn in this. Um, not sure why that's not. Oh, I didn't have that set, did I? No, this is the joy of the testing software. There we go, yeah, sorted. Ha ha! Got there in the end. Oh, and we actually do have a, a whistle board there. Which is nice. We actually do have to stop here. I'll do the pull away in the passenger view for you as well. Wonder what we're waiting on. So you can see the crispness of the livery is 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 unbelievable. I think all the numbers have now been sorted as well. They all work like they all sorted. There's loads of stuff that needed moving. Um, on I think it's this end. There's like a whole section of something that needed like covering over and changed. Can't remember what it was. Anyway, this this was more about the scenario more than the Azuma it just happened to use the Azuma you'll get a proper video of that when we do do it do what any good driver wouldn't do um, business Until about 1800. What am I waiting on? Nothing. Oh. I'm in neutral. My DSD shouldn't be going off. Right, into forward, DRA off. I have to get 
to get that sorted as well. So this is me testing this scenario and uh, showing it off at the same time. That didn't happen the first time I tested it, actually. Just try and make up some time. I was going to pull away for you. The pass view. Let's give you a bit of passenger view anyway. So you can hear how some of the phasing isn't quite right yet and stuff. Oh, DSD. Actually, I'll get to do another pull away because we'll be down to like 15 at car stairs anyway, won't we? Need to get used to, need to muscle memory comes into play with uh, <laughs> these bits of hardware. There's part of me that still needs to go for Q, and now I don't go for Q anymore. I'm still going to go, oh, where is it? Uh, but knowing it's where it is, I'm quite happy now. It's so much more enjoyable to use, though. Bad now, I try not to use my phone when, especially when I'm doing videos, but I've got loads of bits going on at the minute that I need to sort of be on the ball for for today. Otherwise, this is the only video that's going to get done for today.
up to 30 now, which is nice. Right, let's do... You should hear some of the transitions in here. They're not final yet, but you'll hear the, the gist of them. Transitions on there for that bit yet. Yeah. And remember, they're excessively loud just because of the way things are for testing purposes. Start getting the rail grind noise sort of kicking about now ish. I mean, Jesus, as they are just now, they could be released and they'd be better than what's there. And you hear the secondary bit kick in now. Just like that little bit just after 70 mile an hour that they do. It's weird. I don't know what that actually is. Weird track noises in that as well, which isn't meant to be there. That last sort of seven miles of that sort of section's route is so slow. Coming down to 15 and turning that corner at cast airs is, it can't be that efficient time-wise, can it? What I will say is it makes a train I wouldn't usually have driven in train sim because it was so bad drivable. That's, that's pretty nice. Again, for an old route, it isn't the worst in the world, this bit either. I mean, this is built, I think this section of it's built off the Edinburgh Glasgow, and it's, again, years old. It still holds up. I quite like it. It's nowhere near as good as, as new routes, but I still enjoy it.
it's quite a nice downhill section now. Now-ish. So that's going to be flicking it in and out of a brake position. See, one thing I've found with driving the other units is that I've not been that fussed about matching the speed exactly. Um, funny enough, I'm sitting here doing it now with uh, this. I don't know why. Uh, but since I've had the PBC, I've been much happier doing 93.8 instead of 95 or 94 and a half uh, and not been too fussed about getting those point bits of a mile an hour correct. Um, but I'm finding myself doing this day and I, don't have I have no idea why. <laughs> Just one of those things. I sit there watching myself doing it going, you weren't doing this for ages. Because it's a really bad habit. Because I sit there and I watch it. And I watch it. And I watch it. And I watch it. And then I end up not talking. Or looking at what I'm doing. Flatten out and then go down another bit of a hill. Sorry, railway terms, gradient. Leaves lose its 10 mile an hour and then back up to 95. Hey, we can do some speed, brilliant.
so it's weird, isn't it? Zoomers are sort of growing on me a little bit now. They're sort of, I'm sort of getting there with them. I do always find that sometimes having a train, having a train, a train sim, or <coughs> um, a decent model of, of of locomotives or rolling stock has always helped nudge me in the direction of liking trains that I wouldn't have usually. And I don't dislike IETs because they replaced the HSTs and they replaced the 91s. No, and it, I, if you want to go on about plastic trains, this really ain't your channel for you. Um, the reason I dislike them is that they're very ill thought out. Um, the only Zoomers are a prime example of somebody looked at a spec sheet and went, yeah, all of it, for things like little coat hooks, great bike racks, all that sort of thing, some great amenities on them. And then forgot the basics like seat comfort and uh, a decent buffet and all of that jazz. So I know it's economics. I know why they are the way they are. Um, before anybody goes on about DFT said they'd have the seats because it was fire. Or DFT said they, they spec them, but they just had to buy them. Research it. Um, it's not as clear cut as that. The DFT and the whole uh, IEP, so the Intercity Express program, um, was one day it will be down as a scandal. Um, I may do a little mini documentary on it at some point. Three minutes, okay. We're not far off now, are we? So she coming into Edinburgh, we've got the Edinburgh with the five circle with the Edinburgh suburban stuff on. Um, you'll either see that video by now or it will be the next video out after this. See, it's one of those bits of line that I really like, but actually probably watching it has been pretty boring. I do apologise.
love to see this with our O red line pack on, I'll be honest. And the AWS delay will be in as well. I did think that was already in actually. So we're going to get held before going into Haymarket. Can I remember where there was this signal that just creeps up on you and then all of a sudden it's there, even though you can see it in the HUD. just round this corner. That's there, yep, yeah. see? TBWS intervention on that one, not that I really wanted that. Closer. See, I um, wonder if it still uses the old braking characteristics. Sense why it went. Don't know how that works actually with it on the on the game. So DRA on into neutral. Should we try tabbing this again? Denied, good. Front ends on them do look nice. The bits I don't like about them, and it is aesthetics, don't get me wrong. I like when they have the big empty bits at the backs of the carriages. I just think aesthetically they could look nicer. I know that having underframe skirting on things is an absolute nightmare for, for fitters and um, everything like that. For maintenance and stuff, but looks cool. How late are we in? Mm, no, all right. Make good time.
There's another double one five six set up. I don't know if they're that common, are they? I wonder if they're standing in for something. Quite a long stop at Haymarket there. Yeah, so before this scenario comes out of Subway, it'll have a different 180 scenario, uh, skin on it. Because that one can't be using the payware ones. No. Love to see the 180. Yeah, I think 180, 380 gets some love at some point as well. Nice like of that, so if you did look down, you'd see a train in there, but it's not cluttered. Okay. Oh, shush you. You're in neutral. Right, uh, into forward. Double yellow, DRA off. Power on. for our path in, are we? Yeah, waiting for our path in. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of tabbing because I'm also testing this scenario as well as recording it, so... Dodgy move, I know. Platform 2. It's actually right at the other end, isn't it? It's a 
another four car 156. So once the slightly dodgy AI is sorted, I think that'll be a, a lovely scenario. That's a good run, actually. I've enjoyed that. I hope you guys do too. Right, I hope this little um, video has been slightly informative for you, and if not, told you exactly where we're sort of at at the minute as well. Um, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Head on over to 2dscenery.com, um, alanthompsonsim.com, for all your latest uh, and greatest train sim needs. Um, head over to Twitch on a Sunday and Wednesday and sometimes Thursday for Train Sim. Um, and usually Tuesdays are Euro Trucks, so it's Truck and Tuesdays. And that's uh, twitch.tv forward slash Alan Thompson Sim. Links in the description below, guys. So, once again, let me just shut down properly this time. So, it's neutral. DRA on. Pause released. Once again, guys, thanks so, so much. I'll catch you next time.